Hi, in today's strategy, we are using two assets simultaneously, the SPY S&P 500 and the Unipro UPRO, which is a three times leveraged ETF that tracks the SPY. So we will run whatever indicator we'll be using on the SPY. And when a trading signal is triggered, we will actually trade the UPRO. So the trades are always executed on the UPRO, which is the leveraged asset. I backtested this strategy on historical data using automation in Python, and the returns were 614% with a win rate of 46 and the backtest account balance showed an increasing overall equity. So why not just use the SPY? Well, this strategy was first inspired by a publication Leverage for the Long Run, and it suggests using a leveraged ETF instead of the underlying asset for trading. Just as a side note, this study won the 2016 Charles Doe Award, and the strategy relies only on proper leverage. Leveraged ETFs outperform during strong uptrends, but suffer in choppy markets due to volatility decay. So using SPY as a signal and UPRO for trading, the strategy tries to capture bull markets while avoiding losses in downtrends. In this video, we'll go through the details of the strategy and backtest it on historical data using Python language. Before we continue, two points worth mentioning here. The Python code I will be using is available for download for free from the link in the description of this video. So you can get the code and run your experiments if you are interested in the numbers. The second point is that this strategy was proposed by one of the viewers who shared the idea in the comments section. So if you have any interesting ideas to discuss, just drop us a quick description. So the strategy uses two assets, the underlying asset where we generate signals and the traded asset where the actual trading happens. The underlying asset here in our example is the SPY and the traded asset is the Unipro. We will be using a simple moving average indicator if the SPY daily price closes above the SMA, we open a long trade on the Unipro. If the SPY closes below the SMA, we exit the Unipro position. Since the UPRO is a three times leveraged ETF that tracks SPY, trading the leveraged asset here in this case amplifies SPY's gains or losses. So that's the whole idea behind this leveraged style trading. Now let's go through the Python code to see how it works. That's the strategy, it's very simple. I'm using this Jupyter Notebook. So first we're using the uh, Y Finance to get the data. I'm getting the SPY and the UPRO. Can see the starting and the ending dates and so on. Uh, we have to extract these uh, data from the data frame that we got, the raw data frame. So we're extracting SPY and UPRO. This is because of the recent update of the Y Finance. It comes with the tickers as a double index data frame. Then we uh, change some of the names of the columns. So for example, um, uh, renaming the open, high, low, and closing prices of the SPY data frame as open SPY, high SPY, and so on, because then we can merge the uh, UPRO and the SPY in one data frame. And whenever I do the merge and resetting the index, this is what we get. So we have the date as a column. We're not going to use it for this strategy for now, but we have an integer index because we reset the index. Then we have open, high, low, close for the SPY, the volume for the SPY, and the close, high, low, open, and volume for the UPRO. So we're going to leave these names like this because the backtesting package that we're going to use, so I'm using backtesting.py. So from backtesting, I'm importing backtest and strategy. We're going to use these later on for the backtesting. And this package actually is going to look for close, high, low, and open columns to uh, carry out the backtest. So this is why we left these uh, as they are. And since anyway, the trading is happening on the UPRO data, this is the data that we're going to leave as close, high, low, and open prices. And now I'm defining a new class to backtest. So that's the leveraged for the long run class. It inherits from strategy from the backtesting package. Uh, this is the length of the simple moving average period. So it's 150 for now. That's just a random number for now. And this is the constructor. We have the indicator. That's the uh, closing price of the SPY. That's what we're going to consider with the SMA uh, to, um, to uh, trigger uh, trades. So that's where we're going to signal the trades. We're using the closing price of the SPY. And so the SPY close is equal to the closing price of the SPY. And it's the last closing. So the index minus one, that's the last one, the most recent candle. And the SMA value is actually also the simple moving average value 
for the last candle, the current candle. If the closing price is above the SMA value, we're going to open a buying position. But note that this buying position is not going to be on the SPY. It's going to be on close, high, low and open prices, which are the data, which is the data of the UPRO and else. So if we have uh, the SPY close below or equal than the SMA value, we're going to close the uh, positions if we have any open positions. So this is how we go only long actually on this stock. Because anyway, it's uh, climbing the S&P 500, the UPRO, they are all climbing assets. It's um, it's not a good thing to go against the trend and start shorting the market. So we're just going long. And if we have any open position, we're going to close it whenever the SPY closing price goes below the SMA value. And that's it. Actually, we start with a $100,000 as a cash. I'm including commissions and we can run the back test. So bt.run. The uh, results are in statistics, stats, and we print the stats. And as you can see, we obtained 942% in return. So that's more than the uh, the number advertised at the beginning of this video, simply because I forgot which number I used previously. I just used probably 50 or 60. But anyway, when you change the uh, length or the period of the simple moving average, we're going to get different results here. So the uh, win rate is 45% still, and we can plot the equity using bt.plot. But before that, let me change here to 200 because I think most of the sources or the references using this strategy are using 200 uh, period SMA. And if I run this using the 200, we get 349% in returns. Notice if you compare this to the buy and hold returns, it's not doing as well. So the buy and hold is still beating it. It's 1,436%. But nevertheless, it's actually a good strategy if you don't want to uh, buy and hold for a long time. If you want to get in and out of the market, somehow it's less risk. You cash out your money, you put it in your pocket, then you go in with a small amount and so on. So it's kind of psychologically safer to go in and out of the market. You never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to try one more value here. If I put 100, uh, it's a good thing that we have just one parameter to change. So we're not really overfitting the strategy. Uh, so there's no way to cheat our way around. And now for the returns, we get 571% in this case and the win rate of 38% and so on. So we have a maximum drawdown though of minus 54% still. Uh, it's kind of risky, but anyway, it is what it is. This is how you can try it. And this is the plot of the equity and the trades that we can see here. So we have the green trades are winning trades. The red trades are losing trades. The size is also proportional to the amount of the trade loss or win. And we can see the trades here. And this is the equity, actually. It's always on the positive side. It's climbing. It reaches a peak at this point and uh, a big drawdown afterwards. And this was it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you again for those who are contributing, bringing those ideas, those fresh ideas, actually, to the channel. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.